Greetings everyone, welcome. God is good. If you are here for the first time, you are welcome. The Lord has led you to the right place. Things happen when you are in the right place. And because God orders the steps of the righteous, you are heading to your destination and you arrive there on time. What is your portion this year? Everyone is taking their share and uh, God has given everything. You are not going to sit there and watch others get ahead. God has the very best for you. This is a new start, new beginning. And the Lord has great and mighty things in store for all of us. So I want you to choose the best, take the best. It's like having this cake and everyone is getting a slice. You are going to take yours. What is that that you want this year? You have to sit down and choose wisely. Maybe your prayer this year should be, God, give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me knowledge. Where you made mistakes in the past year or years, God is able to restore. God's desire is to see you restored. I want you to choose your portion. Choose your share. The word of God is for everyone. The kingdom of God is for you and it has everything. Remember Philippians 4 verse 19, that God supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. We have Jesus Christ who went already to pay the price for everything. You are not going to pay for everything. He has done it already and heaven is filled up with supply. So we are asking the Lord for what we desire. And what is that portion? What is your portion this year? I want to encourage you in this message. Pick the best. Sometimes, you know, you see kids, they are selfish. They take the best. There's no limit to what God can provide for you, for all of us. There's more than enough, actually. And sometimes we feel for God like, oh, if I ask for the very best, maybe I'm being selfish. Uh, maybe, maybe God will think I'm selfish. And yet you continue to be small and small, ask big. And when your answer comes, it will answer every area of your life. The best about you will come out when you dwell in God's presence. He will show you the best because sometimes we do not know. He shows us and maybe we cannot identify it. So I want you to stay in God's presence. That's where you can know what is good for you. And when choosing that portion, when saying this is my portion, maybe it's finding love this year. Maybe it's getting more strength or growing in the Lord, drawing closer to him, spiritual growth. What is it that you desire? What is it that you want God to do this year? Don't put any limit on God. He is limitless. You can ask anything. He says, ask anything in my name and my father in heaven will do it for you. What does that tell you? It tells you that you can ask for anything. When Esther prayed and fasted, the king asked her, what do you want, Queen Esther? Tell me, even half the kingdom, I can give it to you. You know, Father, God desires that we prosper. He, he desires that we get better. It can only get better. Hallelujah. It can only get better. That's my prophetic phrase this year. It can only get better. Hallelujah. It can only get better because our God is shining the light for his children. We walk in the path of righteousness. Hallelujah. And he has promised that his children will never beg for bread. God's children will never be forsaken. So don't expect that you are going backwards. Don't expect to be stuck. God is getting you unstuck. The power of the Spirit of God is getting you out of that position where you've been for years and years. There's no power anywhere that can stop God's doing in your life. Hallelujah. It's exciting. We should all get excited. Get the very best. Choose anything, he says. Expect. It's good to be expectant, expect 
good, better things, amazing things, because the plans of God are always of good. If you know that God is good, you will expect good things. I want to remind you that this year, in Psalms 65 verse 11, God says that this year is loaded with good things. He has crowned this year with bounty. He has crowned this year with amazing things, great things. And all those breakthroughs are for us. We are going to take our share. Take your share. There's a blessing with your name on it. Do not leave it lying there because you feel discouraged, because things didn't work last year, because people think you are not going anywhere, and someone else is dictating how you should live your life, who you should love, where you should be, forgetting that when you are in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit will guide you. He is going to lead you. He is even going to expose those who stand against you. Any power anywhere will be exposed for your sake. In this family, I talk about prayer because I know that it's the foundation of everything. Hallelujah. Dreams are birthed in the presence of God. And I want you to up your game this year. You are not going to cry and not crying to God. You are not going to be out there and mourn and put you and let your head go down. You will lift your head high up. Your shoulders will be so elevated because you know who you are and who you are. He's able. He's more than able. Hallelujah. He's not a respecter of persons. This is what I love about God. We can all boast about him. We, we trust not in anything. We trust in the name of the Lord. And you know, you can be obedient. You can be faithful to your father. He loves you so much. He cares about you. And God sets you apart. He sets you on high above all nations. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 that if you obey, if you obey, I'll set you high above all nations. Anyone who does that, God in his time lifts the person higher. It takes time. God is not a magician. He loves the process. And sometimes we don't want to go through the process we give up in the middle. The process is not over and we have given up. This is not the year you are going to do that. There's no I can't in this year. There's no I can't in, in the Bible. There is always all things are possible. All things are possible. Whatever did not work last year is working this year by the power of the Spirit of God. Yes, there's no I can't. You will do it through Christ who gives you strength. You and I are going on another level, on the highest level, because God has said so. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hallelujah. And this year, every child of God will be like, Daddy, you're talking to your father. Daddy, this is what I want. I want to find love. I want to be located in marriage. This year, I want my marriage to be restored. I want you to show me what to do in this marriage. I'm tired of figuring things out by myself. I'm tired of praying for marriage restoration. Is there something you are saying? Is there something that will give me a shortcut to my breakthrough? This year, Daddy, I want to just love you more. I want to know you more. I want to grow under your wings. I want to be closer to you. I want to hear your voice more. Father, in this year, I want to experience abundance, plenty, more than enough, fruitfulness. This year, Lord, I want speed in the order of Elijah. In this year, I want to know that you are with me. I want to hear you speak to me. I want to experience the anointing. I want to experience your presence. I want to spread the gospel. I want to lift the name of Jesus higher. In whichever area you put me, wherever I am, I want to make sure that the name of Jesus Christ is lifted higher. Whatever your desire is, God is able. He says he will make it happen. As long as it's in his will, finding love is God's will. 
just make sure you find out before you start asking God for anything. Accompanying your desire with a scripture. Because God is not going to do anything outside his word. He's going to consider what he has already spoken. Are you aligning yourself with the word of God? Any request that you are presenting to God, make sure it has the backing of the word of God. Because the word of God is life and it's what God has spoken. So if there's no scripture that is backing what you are asking God for, if God has not spoken it, you will find your breakthrough delaying. Most of the time is not being in the will of God. And sometimes it's God saying, wait a minute, I'm processing everything. I want you to grow in this. I want you to be stronger by the time this comes to pass. I want you to be a different child. I want you to change lives. Through all this, I want this story to be a story that will bring people to myself. Hallelujah. There's nothing wasted in the presence of God. There's nothing God will take about your life that is going to just be thrown like that. He will use your story. He's going to use that circumstance. So he says he's not going to forsake you nor leave you alone. This is what it means. It means that even when you are going through that process, he's with you. He's actually making you. He's making you great. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, when God called Abraham, he was called Abraham then, and God changed his name to Abraham. He said, I'll make your name great. Hmm? I'll make your name great. And greatness is most of the time being a servant in the kingdom of God. Greatness is not fame. Greatness is, are you impacting lives? That's greatness. How God sees greatness, how God defines greatness is different to how we define greatness here on earth. And you might be mistaken that, oh, that one is famous, that one is this, well-known and that. That is not greatness. You can be famous and taking people to hell and people are looking at your life and no one is changing. You become a bad example to people. Is that greatness even if you are famous? No, that is not greatness. So God is speaking to you right now. He wants you to be great. He wants you to be that person that will hold other people's hands. Maybe just encouraging someone. That is greatness. That is that is what melts the heart of God. Choose something that will melt God's heart this year. Jesus is the paymaster. He pays, doesn't take anything from your hand or from your life and he doesn't multiply it. He makes sure that whatever he takes from you, he gives you back the best. Maybe multiply it. As we are choosing our portions, as we are identifying our portions, this year I want this, I want God to do this. Just seek first the kingdom of God. Do not forget that. Do not forget to seek the kingdom of God. All these things will be added to you. It's the shortcut in life. It's a shortcut in life. It's a shortcut to where you want to be in life. Seeking the kingdom of God. Even just serving in church. Making sure that lives are being transformed. Being kind. Supporting ministries. You want the gospel to be preached. I'm so grateful to everyone who is supporting this ministry. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. God is not going to take your boat and never increase your life. This is the time. Lord, I'm supporting Mumbi Ministries. You have said that you won't take my boat and just leave me dumped like that. Peter's boat was used. And do you know what happened? The business that was going down came back to life. Why? Because anything that is in God's hand, anything that you place in God's hands, will increase and there's protection on it. The enemy won't come and claim it. So many people who are being robbed spiritually, their salaries are spent in the spiritual realm, taken from them, and they wake up, and they, in the physical, they have nothing. Why? 
Because the money has already been spent in the spiritual realm. You want to believe or not. That is your job to do. But there are spiritual entities that will enter your bank account and steal everything. You might think money is there, but it has already been used in the spiritual realm. It has already been claimed. There's no protection on it. How is God going to protect everything in your hands? Put everything in God's hands. I'm not saying you take your salary and you go and you give all of it. That is lack of wisdom. Huh? That is lack of wisdom. Even God will laugh at you. He protects what is in your hands. Ask God to protect everything about you this year, including your finances. Let no spiritual robber have access to your bank account, to, your, to the work of your hands, to your career, to your business in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is enough for you. The blood of Jesus will speak for you where you are not, where you can't be. The blood of Jesus will speak for you. Do you know that the Holy Spirit can, can chair a meeting on your behalf, gathering against your name, and the Holy Spirit will scatter them? That's why we stand to say, Lord, arise and scatter my enemies. The Holy Spirit will go there. He will send angels if, if God wants. He will scatter them on your behalf because you are seeking the kingdom. When you stand to pray, let heaven be backing you. Let heaven be saying, we've sent, I've sent my daughter, I've sent my son to do this. If this happens to this person, if she becomes a shame, everyone around is going to be affected. Let there be something that you are doing for the kingdom that is going to be, that will, will speak for you. Don't live life only for yourself. You don't have to do massive things. Just one thing. I love how God did it through us in December. That was so amazing. Changing just one life. Just making impact in one person's life. And it wasn't one. Many thanks to all of you who were part of that and continue to be part of it. This is a different year. There are principles in the kingdom. And sometimes we do not see the benefits of the kingdom. We're talking about the grace and only the grace. The grace of God is sufficient for all of us. But there are principles that when you follow them, you become set apart. God himself sets you apart. When we went in December, I went to this farm and um, I wanted to see what is being planted there. I was shown these mango trees, very short mango trees. And I looked at this mango tree. It was overwhelmed by fruit. It was overwhelmed by mangoes, beautiful mangoes, like you can just grab one and eat it. I took a picture. I'm like, this mango tree is so short. And because it's so short, I was pushed to ask, how old is this mango tree? When did you plant it? She said, two years ago. In two years, that short mango tree has too much mangoes on it. Fruitfulness, hallelujah, in a short period of time. Why? It's a different breed. I said, why is it so? Because I know that in my village, I, I grew up in the village and I know mangoes are big, trees and it takes years for those for a tree to grow and start producing fruit i'm not saying this because i read or i saw on the internet i watched and i know what i'm talking about in my field in the village there are big mango trees sometimes they are too big but you find sometimes they don't even have mangoes like that small mango tree can have. I said, why? She said, it's a different breed. Instead of taking more than five years for the mango tree to grow and just start producing, this one is a different tree. It's not an ordinary tree. It produces mangoes in two years. I said, ah, it sank in my spirit. I said, different breed not ordinary. That's who I am. I'm a different breed because of what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. You are different. You are a different breed. You are not ordinary. Restoration is coming to you. You are not ordinary. It's the power of the Spirit of God that causes you to produce, to be fruitful. 
because you belong to God. You belong to the kingdom of heaven. What takes others too long, years and years, to see maybe few fruits, for you, it will take less than the time that is required. I'm not saying that you'll be fruitful in two years. No, it can be tomorrow. I'm saying that it takes less time for the different breed to produce than the ordinary tree. Hallelujah. So that's you. That's you God is talking about. You are forced to be fruitful. The Lord right now, by the power of the Spirit of God inside of me, I didn't think of that, but it's just coming right now. And you know John chapter 15, when I was talking about the tree, you are planted in Christ. Jesus himself is the vine. You are the branches. You take your nourishment from the Lord. He's the one pushing you by his anointing, by his supernatural power. And because of that, you produce fruit. You become fruitful in a short period of time. There's no delay for you this year. There's no stagnation for you. You are not going to be stuck. There's no I can't in this year for you in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of the Spirit of God, you are moving forward by fire. The speed that was upon Elijah come upon you now. Begin to pray. Begin to ask the Lord to make your life so fruitful that you'll be overwhelmed by the blessings of God. That you will be like, I give away and I still have more. No lack, no want. God is doing it for you. I hope this has been helpful and you are excited, you are motivated, you are going to sit down and not limit God, not limit yourself. Take care of your thoughts. Let your mind think of the greatness of God and whose you are, who you are in Christ. It's not by your strength, but by what God can do through you. Thank you so much for watching. If this video has been helpful, give it thumbs up. Thank you so much for what you're doing in this ministry. Watch other videos that I recommend at the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, take time to do so because you are being part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Continue commenting, sharing your testimonies, your stories. God is turning around everything for your good. And stay blessed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.